Amen. Amen. We're continuing on our series, and next week will be the last week, and then Lorraine and I and Brig will be going to Belfast, and you'll be having Debbie and Jason who will be speaking over those next two weeks. But tomorrow, we're expecting that all restrictions will be lifted. But there will be still restrictions that are hard, won't we? It'll be hard to readjust and to move. And wherever you're at, that's fine. Next week, we won't be wearing masks. We won't be doing But if you want to wear a mask and that's how you feel comfortable, then that's where you're at. And, and, and you please do that and, and be the word. But we'll be singing. We'll be praising God in here next week. And we'll be lifting our voices up to the Lord. And uh, you'll not have to sign in next week. You'll not have to do what you've been doing over the past weeks. We may just keep both doors open. So if you just want to continue the one-way system, it's up to you. But, you know, we'll, we'll have that. And as the weeks go on, we'll, we'll, some restrictions will come down from our hearts and our lives. And, and as we move on. But praise God. Amen. We're free this morning. Free indeed. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. So over the past weeks, we've been looking at righteousness revealed. Our right standing with God. Our position with Him. And righteousness revealed helps us to position ourselves to think differently and to live differently. What do you mean by that? When we have righteousness consciousness, when we're aware of who we are, then we respond to who we are. Amen? And it's so important that as children of God that we get to know who we are. We've heard the messages over the weeks, haven't we? And there's been some fantastic messages that has been spoken uh, in between when I haven't been speaking. They've been marvellous. David brought a great message. Looking in the mirror, Jason brought a great, great message. Helen brought a great message. And God has been speaking to us and saying, come on, know who you are. Discover who you are. You see, running in righteousness revelation will change the way you think and feel about being inferior, insecure, fear, internal fears, anticipation of things going wrong, behavior patterns which seems to be unending. When you're operating in righteousness revelation, we've shared and we spoke how it starts to release you and you start to realize, hey, I don't have to live in fear anymore. I don't have to live in those things anymore. You see, we the church were never ever called to live in fear. We established that righteousness was given to the church. We showed you the gift of righteousness is from our faith in Jesus. That he who had no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. That we may die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Wow! In that portion of scripture alone, there is so much there. We talked about how meditation produces revelation. And righteousness revelation only comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us and speak to us and show us. We looked at God's original intent for righteousness. What was in God's mind concerning mankind? To make us the children of God. To have ability to exercise righteous authority. God's intent for mankind was to discover who he was. God's intent was for mankind to be a voice of righteousness. That's the introduction. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have called us. You have placed us here, Lord. You have given us your righteousness. You've given us, Lord, your goods. We have the goods of God living within us. Help us, Lord, to be that voice. Help us to speak out. And help us, Lord, 
to declare who we are in you. Amen and amen. Lovely to see you this morning. And the worship was great, wasn't it? It was good to be able to praise God. Eve comes to Adam and she says to Adam, Are you seeing someone else? Adam says, No, you're the only woman on the earth. But she seems a bit agitated and a bit frustrated. And he says, Eve, what are you doing now? She says, I'm counting your ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Adam spoke, the, the jokes will get better. Adam spoke in righteousness authority. He said to the land, you already get the now, aren't you? <laughs> Adam spoke in righteousness authority. He said to the land, from this day, you will be called a lamb. The lamb didn't answer him back and say, no, I don't want to be called a lamb. I want to be called a giraffe. He says, no, you are lamb. He spoke with the voice of righteousness and he declared, you are lamb. We know that from lamb there comes all other kinds of lamb kinds, isn't there? All different types of feline stuff. We see them. But from a lion never came a dolphin. It's impossible for there to be a different species from a lion. There'll be kinds, but there'll never be another species. Sadness will tell you that there can't be. There won't be. Some people will try to tell you different and say that there is and there isn't. But I want to say to you this morning, there is no new species. Yes, there's kinds, but no new species that has come from the land. He spoke to the ape. And he said to the ape, you be an ape. The ape never said back to him and says, no, I want to be a man. He didn't speak back to him and say, I want to be what you have. He was an ape and Righteousness authority said, you be that ape. And we have stacks of ape kinds, don't we? We have all different types, monkey, there's stacks of ape kinds. But God looked and he said, you know what? There is no one who can mate with you. There is no helper for you. He says, so I am going to make you, I am going to give you a woman. And I am going to take the rib or take something from the side. And there's going to be another mankind. There will be man male and there will be woman. They will be mankind. There's no other than male or female in the world. They are mankind. That's what it is. A scientist was arguing with me and said, Oh, do you know what? This message that you're preaching, he says, It'll not win friends and influence people. He says, we came from something. We came from some type of vape. I says, you know what? I'm not interested in making friends and influencing people. I'm interested in bringing the power of God. Would you like to receive Jesus as your Savior? And you're jumped out of the seat. You see, we're not called to be God pleasers. We need to be sensitive to what we're saying. But this one guy who thinks he's a scientist said to me, he says, you know, Fred, he says, you can change the outwards, the outside, but you can't change the inside. If your DNA is male, it will always be male. If your DNA is female, it will always be female. He says, you can't change the inside, but you can change the outside. I know someone who changed my insight and his name is Jesus. Amen. He took the old and he gave me the new. Maybe you need a change this morning. Maybe you're watching on YouTube and you need a change this morning. God wants to take your old and give you his new. He's the one who brings change. Praise God. Hebrews at chapter 11 verse 12. If you have a Bible, let's turn to it now. Wow. 
And by faith, even sorrow was past chambering. She was past childbearing age. Was e unable to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And countless as the sounds in the seashore. Against all natural ability, Abraham believed in God's ability. The Elmer, he says, God's not looking for ability. He's looking for a feel ability. Are you available this morning? Are you available to walk in the righteousness that God has given you? Are you available to speak out life and to declare and to take authority and to reign in Christ? Are you available to do that this morning? You see, when God changes the names, God puts a niche in the name. Why? David shared this with me last week and then I looked it up. Why? You see, the fifth letter in the Greek and the Hebrew alphabet is He, H, He. That's how He. Isn't that right, David? He. <laughs> it makes the sound H as in the word hit. It means different things. It means to behold. It means breath. It means sigh. It means look, reveal, and revelation. I wanted to bring that through to you. From the idea of revealing a great sight by pointing it out. Therefore, the letter is a picture. What's it a picture of? It's a picture of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is thought as the breath of the mouth. What did God do when he gave life to man? He breathed into his being. Speech sadness. Know that when we take more in by inhaling, more deeply before speaking, which ensures much longer expiration, Expiration phases. You know, when Debbie was doing her storytelling, when I was trying to get her on the phone, not ignoring her, but trying to get her on the phone so that we could show it, she was using different breaths. She was expressing herself. She was breathing out the breath of the Holy Spirit actually was coming from her. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives with in her. It's a necessary condition. Santos tells us, and this is a quote that I wrote, for uttering the different sounds and the rhythmic aspects of language. This is what the Santos is saying. Wow, the Hebrew picture is that we have the breath of God. We have the we have the stuff. We have this. We, the righteousness of God, have the stuff of God living within us. Abraham and Sarah are now speaking out in the rhythmic voice of faith. Wow. You see, she's believing that. She's speaking out the, in this rhythmic voice of faith. And God wants us to speak out in the rhythmic voice of righteousness. In the, ha, it will come to pass. You see, rhythm, this is what it means in the dictionary. Rhythm means an ordered, recurrent alteration or alternation. An ordered, recurrent alternation. Of strong and weak elements in the flow of the sound and the silence in speech. Wow. It's ordered 
recurrent. Alternation. You see, when we came to Jesus, there was an alternation, wasn't there? There was an alternation. We have been given an ordered, recurrent alternation in our lives. Abraham and Sarah are now speaking out in the rhythmic voice of faith. The breath of God. The rhythm of life. An ordered, recurrent alternation. I want us to say that this morning. You see, the intent for righteousness was not just to not say anything, was not just to curl back. The, the, the whole intent for righteousness was that we would stand in the right standing with God and be that voice. We looked a bit at that last week. To be that voice. What happens? You see, God alters their names, which changes their destiny. God alters their names. The changes because they still have the S A R, don't they? They still have the A B R A M, and he puts the H in, doesn't he? I got another A if I can remember. But this, he alters their names. He says, "Now, nah. hey, breath of life in you." So what does Sarah do when she hears she's going to have a baby? She laughs. What? What does what does Abraham do? What does Sarah do? What do they, they both they both laugh? He laughs, it tells you in, in Genesis 15, verse 17, I think it is. Can I just say this to you? When you look at the book of Genesis, Genesis, it's not always in chronological order. Here we see something's going on mightily. He changes the name. Genesis 15 verse 6 says, Abram believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. Not Abraham. Abram. Abram. His righteousness. When, when was his name changed? When he believed. Well, there's a year then between there. When he believed. 99, he's 100 when he had, they have the baby. I know there's a, there's, there's a thing in the Bible that's called firsts. Looking at the first. If you're going to teach him something, it's always important to look at it where it was first mentioned. Can I just tell you in, in, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. This is the first time believe is used in the Bible. And the first time righteousness is used in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? This is the first time. This verse. This is the New Testament gospel in the Hebrew scriptures. Wow. Later quoted four times in the New Testament. When was his name changed? When he believed what God said at 99 years old. He may have been 99 years and one month or two months. We're not giving, but we see in those three chapters that this is all going on. When did he become righteous? When he believed what God said. Romans 1, 18 and 17. I've been quoting it and I'll quote it again. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God that brings salvation. First to those who believe, first to the Jew, and then the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by feelings. No, I'm glad you're nodding your head because you're listening to me. A righteousness that is by faith. First to last, just as it is written. The righteous will live by faith. It was credited to him as righteousness. Why? Because he believed. If we're going to live in righteousness revelation, we must live in thy faith. 
We must live in my faith. What is my faith? Hebrews chapter 11 from the King James. My faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Substance, I looked up in the dictionary. I do a lot of looking up in the dictionary, haven't I? Substance means material with a particular physical characteristics. Wow. Also look to see if this word could also be interpreted into a calm, reality, realization. When you look at this word, this is what it can be put into if you're a translator of the, the word of God. Substance. Now faith is the reality of the gospel. Now faith is the reality of the gospel. What is the gospel? The righteousness of God. Wow. Faith is, Paul was able to declare, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Wow. Do you know why? Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. And he says, and in this gospel, for in this gospel, a righteousness is revealed. Oh! A righteousness is revealed. You see, we spoke about revelation. We're all at different places. Don't, don't assume that someone is in the same place where you are. They may be further on. They may have more hold of what God is saying to them. Hopefully the preachers, and if we're bringing a message, that we're getting it. Because if we're not getting it, how do we expect other people around us to get it? And over the past weeks, God has been challenging me in every area of my life. Every area. Because I want to live in righteousness. I want to walk in it. My faith says... In the Amplified, my faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation, things hoped for, the finally guaranteed, an evidence of things not seen, the conviction of the reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. We have a sixth sense. And it is faith. We have a sixth sense. We are righteous. And guess what? Abraham and Sarah just took it as a, as a fact. We're going to have a child. We look as if we're dead. They laughed. We're going to have a child. Why? What does Sarah say? Because he promised it. And what he says will come to pass. They took it as a fact. God wants us to take his word as a fact. To believe what it says. What was it James said? Just don't hear the word. But do the word. He says if someone hears the word, he's like a man who looks in a mirror and goes away and forgets what he's heard. You see, it's so easy to come in here on a Sunday. They hear the word and just to go away and forget it and not even look at it again or try to see what God was saying to us. It's so easy to do it. And sometimes I do it. I don't look at my sermon notes again. Regularly, lately I have been. And then when somebody says to me, what were you preaching on Sunday? Oh, I don't have a clue. <laughs> because we forget so easy in the mind. You know, Mark 11, verse 22. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says, speaks to the mountain, go through yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believe what they say as a fact. What did Abraham and Sarah do? They believed what God said and they believed what they said and they believed what others were saying about them. You are the father of the multitude. From high father and I to the father of of the multitude. The name Sarah means princess. You are a princess among women. Lorraine, you're my princess. He says, therefore, he says, have faith in God. Wow. What a statement he says. 
If you don't get anything this morning, have faith in God. But do you know what? Righteousness, revelation, and faith, they come together. They come together. If you're walking in righteousness, you walk in faith. If you're walking in faith, you can't not walk in the righteousness revelation of God also. I believe the two of them are inseparable. Therefore, I, verse 24, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. What is prayer? Communication to God. Speaking to God. God has said to us, I want you to speak out. I want you to proclaim. I want you to be a voice of authority. We need to speak out. We need to declare. By your stripes I am healed. I'm not getting the COVID. It's not coming near me. I am healed and I'm staying healed. And if that virus tries to come near me, it will die as soon as it gets here. Wow. Are you mad, Fred? No. I want to speak out in authority. See, Lorraine hears me doing things in, in the, the living room like this. I speak out at the clock, I proclaim. But usually when I pray, and David's been with me when I've done this, I pray the word of God. You can't go wrong praying the promises and the word of God. You see, I do that. I have the word open and I'm praying through verses. I'm praying through God's word. Why? Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Wow. God is faith. God is good. You know, what God says will always come to pass. Romans 4 and 17. God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. You see, we need to call some things into being. We have this authority. We have this voice. But it must be based on the word of God. It always has to be based on the word of God. God called the seed of the woman to Christ the head of the servant. Isn't that what he said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15? That the seed of the woman he called that from the beginning. And it will always and has come to pass and will continue to come to pass. When did it come to pass? Well, we see it very clearly. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he got up and he went to the cross. When he got up from the cross and went down into the earth. When he went down from the earth and he rose up. And he rose victoriously. And it says that he went into the depths of the earth and the Spirit quickened him. Wow! And first Peter. Here's another verse. I'll read it out in a minute. Romans 16, verse 19. Your obedience is known to all, and thus I rejoice. Paul saying this over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent. And innocent in what is evil. He speaks this out at the end of his letter to the Roman church. And he says, but I want you to be wise in what is good and what is righteous. You see, that word can also be interpreted as righteous. And he says, and I want you to be innocent in what is evil. What does it mean to be innocent? Free from legal guilt or fault. What does righteousness standing put us? It puts us in a place that we are free from legal, from legal guilt or fault. He says, I want you to be free from sin. Innocent. And what is evil? I want you to be free from the effects of sin. I want you to be free from sin. I want you to walk in righteousness. Galatians 5 and 1. For it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened by the yoke of slavery all over again. You see, we're in freedom. 
But the burden of slavery wants to come upon us and wants to stop us and wants to hinder us from walking in our righteousness revelation. Righteousness consciousness will stand you in freedom. Righteousness consciousness. Aware, awake who you are. Awake of who you are in Christ. It will help you. It will please you. It will stand you in your freedom. This is what the scriptures teaches us. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Wow. We don't have to sin every day. What do you mean? Listen, we're in sin. We're in sin. And we'll always be in sin. But when we walk in righteousness, we start to sin less. When we walk in the understanding of us, I don't do that anymore because I have a new nature and that is not me and I don't live that way any longer. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And we spoke a bit about that last week. And Hosea chapter 4, God says, my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Romans 1 verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their thoughts. It became about them. And their senseless hearts were moved so easily. They were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Awake to righteousness. Awake. God wants us, the church, to wake up this morning, to shake ourselves, to realize that, hey, we don't have to walk the way that we've been walking, that we have been given righteousness standing. How did Paul stay in righteousness? I'm going to finish within the next couple of minutes. I promise you. How did Paul stay in righteousness? He reminded himself that his righteousness was in Christ alone. How did Paul stay in righteousness? He re and I'm talking about his mind. I'm talking about, you know, being a word. He renewed his mind. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Anybody know the address? Romans 12 and 1. He renewed his mind. He spoke in authority. All through the chapters, book of Galatians. Wow. He says, some are saying I'm a mom pleaser. Because I'm not living according to the law. He says, listen, if I were a mom pleaser, I wouldn't be uh, living the way in grace. You see, grace is sacrificial. You see, we live in grace. And it's called to be sacrificial. It's not called just to get through and sing uh, wee songs and whatever else and just to live. No, we're called to live a sacrificial life, just as Christ lived a sacrificial life. Doesn't mean we have to die on the cross, but we need to realize that grace is giving and giving and giving and giving. I was speaking to someone one time and trying to encourage them in their marriage. And I said, what's the key? What's one of the keys in marriage? And they said, oh, the give and take. And I says, do you know in the scriptures, that's not what it says. It says give and give and give and give and give. What's the law of giving? Give and it shall be given down. Given to your prayers down. Wow. Shaking the gap, running over with the magic you use, it shall be used. We're called to live in grace. And I'm going to do a series on that at some time. God's been giving me some revelation. He believes in what the word said. And believed what he said. With righteousness authority. 
Romans 16, verse 4, 6, verse 14. You have been set free from sin and have become slave of righteousness. Ephesians 2 and 13. But now you belong to Christ. At one time you were far away from God. Now you have been brought close to him. Christ did this for you when he gave his blood on the cross from the New Life Version. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. Do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Praise God. Righteousness, revelation will help us to honor God and give glory to Him in all that we do. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you will help us this morning to see who you are, to see who we are, just as Sarah seen, just as it was revealed to her, just as Abraham seen, just as those Wow. Who walked around the walls of Jericho. And when you told them to do what you told them to do. And they were obedient. They sinned. And the walls came tumbling down. Lord I pray for whatever walls are in people's hearts this morning. The righteousness will help them to tumble down. Lord whatever is going on in their life. Wherever they're at. Lord, whatever thing, whatever tries to come against them, Lord, that they will tumble down. They will fall down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We sung a song. Every giant will fall. The mountains will move. Every chain of the past you've broken into. Our fear of our lives. We're singing the truth that nothing is impossible with you. Come on. Do we really believe that when we were singing it today? That there's nothing impossible for you.